this aggressive shark noise, which has a benefit. It's, it's, a, it's a key element for the Mustang since 50 years. On the other side, it really helps uh, for the aerodynamics. Actually, split the air and, and peak. Uh, and you're going to see that later in the demonstration. Basically, uh, to attach the airflow on the entire hood. Um, if you go further to the outboard side of the front, you can see the air curtains, we call them air curtains, which are integrated in the fascia. You can see that all right through the fog light area. And you can actually stick your hand through there. So it, it's, it's, it's a cool feature. It looks really good on the car. It, it creates this wide stance and, and, and looks. Uh, on the other side, it's very functional as well. So um, that actually shows there's a, there's a nice collaboration between design and engineering where good things come together. Um, Right here you see a GT spec car, which is the 5 liter, and you can look at, at the hood where we have a functional air extraction. <coughs> One point uh, we basically extract the heat from the engine. On the other side we also um, create downforce, basically have airflow through the grill and basically create another air downforce generator through here. Um, so right here you see a different grill, which is a GT grill, which is much deeper than the <coughs> EcoBoost engine, where you're going to see in a little bit. Uh, which EcoBoost engine, for example, has uh, active grill shutters, which functions at high speed. They basically sh uh, close and, and open, so in, in order to <coughs> reduce drag and uh, help out with the, with the fuel economy. Um, if you go further to the car, on the side of the car, you can see another cool element that is the mirror. Basically, mount the mirrors on, on the body side instead of mounting them on, on the window, so that helps us actually create the Airflow that you're going to see later in the demonstration. So there is a quite nice, uh, basically, the, the, appear, the car appears wider on one side, like I mentioned, and on the other side, the side as well. So if you look at the side view of the car, so you can see on the bottom, there's, there's a rocker element which actually connects really nicely to the front. This helps as well to split the air on the side. and wide shoulders, but if you look at the cabin, it's actually tapers to the back, so that helps as well. The overall shape of the car gives you that basically teardrop shape, which is aerodynamically efficient. So what I mentioned before, we spent a lot of time in this tunnel right here with, with aerodynamic theme, uh, and we shaped this decade. We did probably about 10, 15 versions, you can imagine, of this decade right here, and this is the final result, where you basically have a perfect balance between creating a downforce and reducing the drag. Uh, and you can see right here, there's basically an integrated spoiler, uh, which uh, you again going to see in this demonstration later on. Um, so overall, the car actually, it, it, it's not just looking good, it actually performs very well. So I think that's the key element that uh, we made sure from the beginning on to work very closely with our aerodynamic team. And uh, um, this is the outcome, basically. Are you saying the number? The numbers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, it's 3% better here. than the Aquiline model for total <laughs> drag force. What's that mean in CD terms? Uh, um, we're still waiting for the final CD numbers. We'll get them for the, uh, the media launch, the full wall media launch. Uh, but what we are confident in will be 3% better for the total drag forces than the Aquiline model. Which, if the follow-up question is, what's that mean? Fuel economy. So on the highway, if you do the math, it's basically one percent highway fuel. Is, is that straight. extractor functional? Mm -hmm. the, the rear extractor, yes. So the rear diffuser is actually creates downforce as well. So, <coughs> like I mentioned before, which I forgot, uh, on the front splitter we have uh, two different front splitters. You're gonna see it later on. We have the performance pack, which is a little bit more aggressive because it has different targets to achieve. It creates a bit more uh, downforce, and then as you can see on this model right here, we don't have a, a spoiler, but there's an optional spoiler, which in the EcoBoost gets a different spoiler, and the GT gets a, a little bit more aggressive in order to balance the car with a perfect balance between front and back. Is there yet an optional spoiler on top of this if you want one? Yes. Uh, yes. 
Is that part of the performance pack or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, okay. They, they mentioned the um, <coughs> some of the arrow on the convertible. What's the what's the improvement? I'm assuming it's been tested in here. What's the improvement? Uh, the numbers. Uh, you have you have anything on the convertibles this top year off versus? Top down. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm just I'm, I'm I'm assuming it's improved for both of them. Yeah, so. it's improved for both of them based uh, on the based on front shape. But again, the convertible is uh, is a different again than the coupes, right? The coupe has a more sleeker design than the convertible. It's generally a flexible top, so it's nice. So it's and top ups better than top down. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you say how many hours we're kind of spending in the wind tunnel with the vehicles, any idea? Well, we spend a lot of hours actually. Once we, you know, like like we said, we started from very early, started on the, on, on the first couple of models we had, and we had this, uh, you know, and then once we finalized the design, we spent a lot of hours shaping the front end, shaping the deck lid, getting all this refinement with the, with the engineering team over in the aero tunnel. And there's a lot of hours actually we spent together. You said so since, since the Mustang, uh, as it currently is, is a global vehicle, both from computational and hardware testing, it's about twice as much to develop this Mustang than the outdoor Mustang. Twice as much hours? Yeah. In the wind tunnel? Both. Analytics and uh, wind tunnel. You said that you had about 10 to 15 different uh, tops there. What, were, what, what did the other ones kind of look like? And why did you settle on this one? Well, I'm just saying basically in order to get the perfect balance and perfect shape, you have to basically spray to the surface, and, and we're talking about millimeters. Yeah. It's not like drastic changes. It's talking about raising a millimeter up there, and it, you will be surprised how much change you can get about changing a millimeter yeah. up and down. And uh, basically, you can change the, the, the attitude of the entire car. Deck lids on a, on a coupe like this, if you try to break the airflow, are highly sensitive. And so it's, it's like a three way deal between design, aero, and the stamping guys. Because it is pretty hard to stamp something out of that out of one piece of metal. So it's uh, the three teams working together very closely to lay out what ends up being a, a very nice execution of a one piece system instead of having a bolt on, which ends up sleeker in the appearance. Just to mention on the back, you basically have a functional diffuser as well. I forgot to mention that. Maybe. So right here you have the GT premium pack, which has the different diffuser than the base program than the V6 basically for example so this is a two piece right here and this is a little bit you see you see right here there's a different shape in there basically which helps as well again uh, create better airflow to the back end okay um, we got you in the wind tunnel right so uh, we wanted to do some stuff in the wind tunnel since we're here uh, so again the main part of the, the 15 Mustang, right, again, is technology, right? We're using active grill shutters. We're using uh, taking air from the front of the car, developing a high-velocity curtain across the front wheel, right? That's a new application for us to reduce drag. And then, as Kamal was saying, right, there's a lot of stuff you can do in aerodynamics to have a real aggressive look in the car, but still to keep that attachment of the flow, right? So. Instead of words, what we want to do is spend the time, actually, Ken's going to get a smoke wand out, and we're going to go through and walk through the key features one by one. So general viewing area, I'd say in this general quadrant, is a, is a good idea. And then uh, I'm assuming you guys will play nice together. Is it okay if I set my camera up on the other side? Uh, you we're going to be on, we're going to be, yeah, you're gonna be on won't see much from okay, the other okay, side. Great. Um, uh, you, you are able to go a little bit across the yellow line. Uh, but to and not interfere with the smoke, uh, you want to be aft of the smoke. It takes yeah. less so we're going to be uh, bringing going. it up to 30 miles an hour. Everybody got the glasses? Yeah, the glasses have to be on so stuff don't, doesn't fly in your eye. We're bringing it up to.